Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, what we're going to do is to slightly change our architecture in a good way. We are going to create ourselves a new class called Ability Behavior, and we're going to move from an interface setup for abilities to an inheritance setup so that we can centralize all that repeating code that Rick just wrote, those three uh, instances of changing the particle effect. We can move all that upper level to the top level of special abilities, um, therefore not repeating ourselves. Wow, I had to have Rick add the same piece of code, the same change to three different files just then to get that particle effect to play in the right place. We had to put this play particle effect behavior, uh, this play particle effect code rather, is in area effect behavior, power attack behavior, uh, self heal behavior, and all future special abilities that we create. That's rubbish. Remember in coding, there is a principle that says that you're not supposed to repeat yourself. It's the dry principle that don't repeat yourself principle. And of course, I always say it's okay to repeat yourself once. You know, you do something once, it's okay. You do it again, it's okay. When you get to a third time, uh -uh, now it's time to, to do something about it, right? So let's not repeat ourselves. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna need to think about switching from special abilities, behaviors, implementing an interface over to the idea that they actually in inherit and that an area effect behavior goes from a can do relationship i.e as an area effect behavior i can do what uh, i special ability interface asks me to do i.e i have a use to an i actually am a special ability because or an i actually am an ability behavior let's call it so an area effect behavior rather than this complicated inheriting from mono behavior and implementing i special ability what we can do is just create a new class very much like we did for ability config in fact if you just look at the folder structure of special abilities it kind of gives you a hint that this is where we could be going we have at the top level we've left ability config and that is a class which what does it inherit from it inherits from a scriptable object and then remember that we for each of our actual abilities, we inherit from ability config in turn. So self heal config is an ability config, and it is also a scriptable object because ability config inherits from that. And what's quite nice about this is it shows you only the stuff that is specific, well, actually apart from attached component two, which we'll get to. But if we ignore that for a moment, it's only talking about stuff that's about self heal, right? And that's what we want it to be. That's what happens when you don't repeat yourself. Things only tell you what they need to tell you. A place for everything and everything in its place. Anyway, you get the idea. So what I would like to do is have a new class here called, what should we call it? Ability behavior, I think. We'll have ability config and ability behavior. So let's start off just by doing that. So at the root of special abilities, I'm create a new C sharp class called ability behavior by the way you can go from an interface when you've got something that's an interface definition it's a nice light and simple way of starting when we have these kind of relationships so if you've got an interface here which we do at the moment and we've got a similar thing with a damageable you can go from an interface to inheritance and that's quite easy to do, as we're going to see in this video. You could also go from an interface to a pure component relationship, which we'll probably do with the health system. At the health moment, the damage ability is, a, is an interface, but it could just be a health system or something like that, health system component. And we'll see how you can start with an interface nice and light and simple. And when you prove its worth and prove it gets used a lot, we can move to inheritance or component-based um, composition. This is how do we compose things together by inheritance or components. Anyway, let's get on with it and you'll see how it works. So, ability behavior, brand new class for us. Well, what's it going to do? Well, well, we're going to want to store a reference to the relevant config. Now, we're not even going to be able to see ability config at this point because we don't have a namespace on new class. So let's just go and namespace this rpg.characters. And whenever you namespace, ask yourself, is this appropriate? Are abilities only relevant to characters? Well, yeah, they are. That sounds fine. So ability config. And let's just call it config. So we're going to actually store the reference to our config right here. All right. So I would also like to move the concept of setting config here. But before we, before we get any further, we need to start getting rid of the interface so that the so that we can start shifting all of our behavior over to this ability behavior. So where was the interface defined? Well, let's go and find, I mean, I actually remember where it was defined, but let me show you one way we could find it. We could say, well, in self heal behavior, up here, it implements I special ability. I'm gonna do com command or control on the Mac, shift and F to find through the whole solution, I special ability, 
and where you see here in ability config that is where we define the interface i special ability so if you just delete the definition of the interface in my in the ability configs uh, class then <clears throat> go back to unity and try looking at the console once it all filters through you're going to find it's all going to fail so let's start fixing those failures well what's failing all of these guys area effect behavior is going to fail because there is no i special ability interface so what we're going to do is instead of inheriting from mono behavior and implementing i special ability we're simply going to inherit from ability behavior all right now let's have a look down does that cause us any problems doesn't appear to at the moment all right cool so let's do the same thing in self-heal behavior. So all of your abilities now, just switch them to inheriting from ability behavior. Even though ability behavior doesn't really do anything yet, let's just see if we can get it to stop complaining as a starting point. Okay, now let's go back to Unity and see what's it complaining about now. It's complaining about another rep use of the I special ability, which is over in the ability config file, we were saying, well, I need a reference to a behavior. And we can simply change this from an I special ability, which that type does not exist anymore, to an ability behavior. It actually reads very simply, doesn't it? Here we are in the config, we need a reference to the behavior, and um, and, and it's of type ability behavior. Okay, cool. So we're still going to get some more errors. Let's see what happens. Now there's a use. What's going on here? So when we try and do now behavior.use, it says ability behavior does not contain a definition for use. So use was the very thing that the interface was going to help us do. And if we look over in our new ability behavior script, we don't have any concept of use. So how are we going to how are we going to implement that now? So the problem is that the use actually gets fully defined down here in what is now a subclass. It's no longer implementing the interface, but it's a subclass. And here's our method, public void use, ability use params, use params. That's all fine, but how are we going to kind of extend that use method from this ability behavior? Well, what we need to do is introduce something called a abstract method here. We're going to make a public abstract void use. Oh, public. Has to be of the same accessibility abstract void use and that's that's going to be it just for now we'll worry about um you know passing in some information about what we use it on like you know these parameters or we might even decide long term we don't need parameters at the simpler ways of doing it but look for now let's just do that public abstract void use now we'd better actually keep the ability use params use params for now okay cool so keeping the interface the same i.e. the the, arg the arguments here the same what we're saying is that we're not actually going to define how this method works right here we're going to define how it works in the base class okay and then in the base class we'll actually say how it works so we need to make our the methods that it were in the interface we need to make them abstract now it's complaining what's it complaining about as abstract but containing a non-abstract class so because one of the methods is abstract we have to make the whole class abstract now don't worry that doesn't break the whole class it doesn't really change how the rest of the class would behave but if you have an abstract method in you need to make the class abstract all right now let's see how this behaves getting a load more complaints so we just need to go through and fix these let's start with the warnings now what's it saying um, this method here ability uh, blah 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 hides an inherited abstract member okay so what do we need to do there well inside of the actual implementation of each of these so if, for example we're in area effect behavior here when we get to use we need to just do something slightly different is we need to say public override so let's override the way that use was defined in the parent class so in the parent class it is abstract we're not actually implementing it we're just defining what it must be look like and then in here we're saying let's override so we need to do that for all of our special abilities now switch to the override keyword now because i've been flipping through files like crazy i'm just going to make sure i do a save all so we don't end up with one of these i haven't saved it issues and let's go back to unity and see what it complains about hmm it's not complaining about anything. Let's see, I don't expect the behavior to fully work, but the game is compiling again, which is a huge benefit. Ow. Now, let's see what happens if we try and Ooh, use an ability. Ah. Ooh, that's better. Okay. So I'm triggering Ooh, off the special better. abilities. Ooh. I appear to be dealing the enemy damage. Ooh, that, ooh, ooh, I'm even ooh, consuming that, ah. energy. Ooh. It actually ah, looks ooh, at a first ooh, pass like better. this is pretty much 
working. That is huge. So that's great news. That's a definite stopping point. That's somewhere we need to commit our work and say, yep, we've achieved something. We've switched from a interface architecture over to an inheritance architecture. The way we did that was broadly in three steps, if we remember. What we did is we, number one, we created our new class. So we create the new, new parent class, uh, which was in our case, the ability behavior class. So we created a new parent. Then we, number two, deleted the interface and switched it over. So delete interface, delete the I, whatever it was. And then we, number three, we used abstract and override. So we used abstract, okay? They're the three things we did in general to make this work. So that's how you can change from an interface to an inheritance behavior. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit that up right now because it is uh, useful work and I will see you in the next video where we'll move all the actual code over.